Hey everybody, Gil here with the Sailing Vessel Dream Chaser. And I think we've uh, we've said in a couple of videos, Deb and I intend to make our way to Florida in the future anyway. We thought, you know what, let's see if we can find any waterfront property um, so we can keep the boat right at the property. The thought was we wouldn't necessarily have to have a slip rent. So we decided to take the weekend. It's pouring in New Orleans. Decided, let's take the weekend. We'll drive over toward Panama City Beach uh, area in Florida and see if we can find, you know, uh, some property. I was about to say, can we go to Florida yesterday? Where are you? I guess what we did. We went to Florida today. Are you super excited? Yeah, I like Over next to palm trees. Wow. You excited about Florida? Yeah. Pretty sad though, isn't it? But how did the hurricane like do this? You know, the houses like don't even move. They just like been knocked it down by this hurricane. I don't like hurricanes. Yeah. And some of these houses got knocked down by the hurricane too. The damage is extensive. Um, we're literally driving, and and it's it's sinking in our heart. I mean, it's uh, it's shocking. Everywhere you see is blue tarps on roofs behind us, um, where all these roofs of homes are damaged. There are tent cities of people living in tents uh, in parking lots. Still, uh, it's six or seven weeks now after the hurricane. Um, and we're in Panama City. We're not even necessarily where the heart of it hit, which was down in Mexico Beach. We're going to drive down there just to see. Uh, but I'm shocked. And I'm just going to show you an example. We, we've been driving and filming a little bit as we've driven, just at, you know, driving by. But there's an interesting scene. I just wanted to show you this. This is not uncommon. We are seeing this all over the place. These pine trees, giant pine trees, and they're just snapped in the middle, somewhere between 20 and 50 feet up in the air. Um, you know, these are good size right here, but it is just shocking shocking and everywhere you look there's piles of debris like what you see there you know and here's a and this was a business of some kind there's a reserve parking for a doctor so i'm guessing it was a doctor's office again closed just there's no there's certainly no people here um and and i don't know if they would have customers even at this point um you know the damage uh, this is a small home community over here across from us and the damage is just shocking shocking one of those elevated marine buildings where boats are stored three and four stories in. Shocking. Shocking.
why does the wind do that? Um, it's something called a low pressure system. It's something that can happen during certain months. Just like, you know, hang on, we have thunderstorms sometimes, or we have cold days and warm days. Well, it's possible that you can have what's called a low pressure system that can form a hurricane. It doesn't always, but it can. And by the way, honey, most of the people that had their houses broken here, most people knew that it was coming and they got in their cars and they left so that they weren't hurt from this. I mean, they lost their home, but their bodies were okay and they have their health and their families. Well, what about their houses? Well, their houses will have to be fixed and rebuilt. I think this hurricane is coming back for to knock all of these houses. Down. We're coming into Tyndall Air Force Bay right here. Uh, Eye of the Storm was probably a little bit south of here, but it's sad. Look, I can already see a sailboat sitting up on land here with tattered sails right there. It's just, you know, there's somebody's dream sitting there. It's a. Our friends lived on base uh, housing here. I have to assume this is probably what some of that's like. Um, I know they lost their entire home. It's really sad. really sad. This whole trip has been pretty sobering, quite frankly. There's a lot of people staying right there and campers. I suspect this is part of what the, maybe the Air Force Base did for people because here's another large, maybe it's a command center or something, but it's called Zero Harm. It may be cleanup crews or something like that as well. But just to give you an idea, I mean, literally look at these trees. Look how many are just snapped or bent over midway through. standing in what was probably once a home. There's paved stones here, looks like it was the underside of it. You can see these are all boat slips on the side. Just give you an idea. Not sure if you can see it, but there's a Jeep sitting up there in that pile of stuff right along the water line on the other side. Well, I know for sure this was somebody probably home right here. So this is the place we, one of the places we came to look at. Um, it's funny, it was listed as a single unit. This is a two person or two family townhome. And one unit was listed for sale and in good structural shape. And then just today they started listing them together. Uh, and ironically enough, I don't know if you can see this, half of one of the units is gone. Now here you can see this unit, uh, you know, literally it's half of it is gone. Yeah, half of it's gone. What's interesting is, you know, docks would need to be rebuilt and stuff like that, but the view right into St. And St. Andrews Bay is not bad at all. You could easily dock the boat right behind it. So a deal to be had, but it's depressing and I almost feel guilty looking at this. Uh, here's the other side of the unit. 
essentially three stories. The nice thing is this water's pretty darn clear. I think in the end, we're just going to look further south in Florida. Deb and I both kind of agreed, even if we found a great deal, we don't know that we could bring ourselves to buy something like this. It feels like it's taken advantage, I guess, of somebody. So anyway, that's our plan. And we'll just come back to Florida again in a couple more weeks. And we'll keep looking at places down there to see if we can avoid essentially slip rent in a marina if we can buy a property at a rate that would essentially make that a good financial decision. But before we could head back to Louisiana from Florida, we had to swing into a Krispy Kreme and let McKinley watch the automated donut making process. The donuts are being made. Look. Look. It's just flipped over again. <laughs> just flipped over. Got a standing shot of it. Before Deb and I took a little trip over to Pensacola, we went ahead and epoxied in that groove that I had cut out. I did not get any footage of it, I'm sorry. We were able to remove the tape to show what the new thickened epoxy that was put in there would look like. Now here's my area of repair, and remember we took tape here, I don't think we showed it the other day, but we put tape right here and filled this whole gap with a thickened epoxy. I'm just going to kind of run my hand right up in here so you can kind of see it. It's, uh, you know, it's not perfect, like there's some areas where there's a gap there. But I can smooth this over when I lay glass all the way up this edge. So I'm going to basically glass up the side of the wall right to the underside of this part of the roof. So I think that's going to look really good. And we kind of did this all the way up here. Um, right up to forward of where the gap was, you know, which was all the way up here. So it looks good. Now the next step here is right above the port here. I'm going to um, grind all this paint away so that when I glass this, it can go right here from the opening of the port and be trimmed along this gap right up the wall and under the side of this edge of the um, the coach house. So, you know, you see here where this other skin was and there's, you know, where it goes from that to the wood. I will make that all one solid piece again. I no, just don't want to connect it up to the paint. So I'm going to grind that down to glass. The weekend's over. We're back from uh, Panama City, Fort Walton Beach, the areas we went looking at lots in. And um, frankly, it's too cold to lay up any epoxy and glass today. So the good news is I was able to go ahead and sand the rest of this down. I wanted to go ahead and get this down to bare glass up to the place where I intend to um, where I intend to fiberglass it. This gives me a good starting point, And as soon as it warms up, I'll be able to lay that glass up in there. I do believe I probably got the leak stopped. But it's going to be a little tough to know because I got that poured out. So I'm going to have to glass it all. Before I paint it, I'll put the glass in, I fiberglass it all, then put the glass back in and let it go through a few rains before we see how well that works. At that point, I will um, fair and uh, prime and paint it or have it done, one of the two. <laughs> So at this stage, I am now just preparing um, to actually grind that paint off. Um, I'm just doing a little bit of fast motion video here. You know, pull out the extension cord. I'm using a four and a half inch grinder with a flap disc on it. Uh, and you can see I'm just, I won't show all this footage, just grinding the whole thing down and uh, getting it down to bare fiberglass for the new layers. Now, so much for living in the South. The temperature has been way too cold to epoxy this week. so. Deb's down below while I'm at work and she's starting to do some varnishing in the salon. Let me kind of show you what that looks like. All right, today's project is going to be getting the second coat of varnish put on the walls. So far looking pretty good with the first coat. So we'll see what it looks like. We went with a semi-gloss, so it's not quite as shiny. Var varnish is on. Looking um, really uneven. Not happy with the way that it looks right now. But it's the first cup. So, as you can see over here, lots of different color variations and whatnot. In the cheek, even though it was all sanded down to the same bare woods. I got the second coat on over here and I can already see where there's little little spots that it soaked in a little bit faster and it's already starting to dry but not loving the way that it looks right now with two coats on. 
So Deb also decided to do the banisters and the railing that divide the galley and the salon with a dark black stain. I think it's going to have to grow on me a little bit, but it should look pretty good when it's done. Well, I think we're going to go ahead and stop the video here. Um, we hope to get a little bit more of this work done potentially over the weekend, as long as one, it's not raining and the temperature increases so we can lay that glass. That's the next step. So we'll end today's video now. Hope you guys enjoyed this week's video. I know part of it was really somber. I got to tell you, it was sobering and humbling just to see the devastation around Panama City and Mexico Beach and Port St. Joe. It was really shocking. Um, so apologize for that part of the video. A little bit of work at the end of this, and we are going to get back to doing more work on the boat. Bye, y'all. Safe sailing.